Hey guys, long time no farm. It's been a while since we've been back to the farm, but unfortunately, we still have our chicken problem. Oh, and look at this rude dude. Go on, get off my porch. Out of here, you. Go on, I've had enough of this. This madness, this crazy chicken madness. But I do have a cunning idea, inspired by some of your comments, about how I'm going to deal with these chickens. But also I want to get onto making a pumpkin and a melon patch, and also look at my trees and see if I've got any cool new saplings towards the Grand Didier Baobab thing. Okay, so let's get farming. Okay guys, so do you want to know what the master plan is? My grand strategy to deal with this white chicken menace? This duck? Oh, oh! Get out of my, get out of my face! He's in my face. I'm in your face. Right, yeah, do you want to know my grand strategy to deal with these chickens? Well, it involves seeds. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to round up all these chickens with some seeds from uh, from here, from this farm. Just grab some of these. And then what I'm going to do with the seeds, actually that's a good point. I'll go and turn my engines on so that my farm can get resuming farm operations. Now remember to, oh well, yeah, look at all that seed oil. That's a gloriously full, massive tank of seed oil. So let's just get the pumps going again. Glug, 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 glug. What? They're not, they're not turning on. Oh, that's right, yeah, I've turned off the uh, the pump that lets them fill up with seed oil. So if I turn this on, these engines will fill up with seed oil, and they'll get chugging away. Now, as you can see, I've added an extra, an extra engine here, a fifth unit to my seed oil battery. But as you can see, all these engines have zero seed oil in the tanks, and I filled them up with lava. Took me a while with quite a few buckets, but I got there in the end, and now these things should never need Another reignition with lava. And there we go. That should pump them up with seed oil, fill those up, and they'll get producing more seed oil and more honey and start grinding bees into bee DNA. Right, so what are we doing then? First things first, we're going to build a giant pit. We're going to build a fire pit with netherrack at the bottom. We're going to light those blocks full of netherrack, make them burn like hot like a furnace, and then we're going to drag all the chickens using the seeds over a bridge above the pit then we're going to cut them off from the bridge, and we're going to destroy the uh, the blocks and let them fall into the fire pit. And there we go, a giant chicken cooked fire pit. Now, what I've noticed as well is while um, while the, these chickens really love water, I think they kind of gravitate towards water. And so what they've done, most of the chickens, is kind of gone to the sea. There's some over there, and uh, I think there's some over here as well. Let's check it out. Yeah, look at all these chickens, man. It's just, it's chicken city. It's like, uh, it's like chicken run gone nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a pit now. now. Have I got a shovel on me? I think I do. Uh, yeah, there we go. Not much, not much left on it, but that should be fine. And uh, there we go. I've got some nether rack that I can set on fire. I haven't got a flint and steel, but I can make one of those. No sweat. Right, so where am I going to put this pit? What well, I think right at the epicenter. Right at ground zero. Now, the chickens escaped from there. So I think just right down here is a great place to dig our fire pit. So I'll just plonk it here, I think. I'll need, I'll need a pickaxe rather than a shovel, it looks like, because there's lots of stone around here. Oh, get some iron while I'm at it. Right, now the fire pit is going to be, oh, I think, uh, a 4x4 four four pit. Oh, out of my way, chicken. Your time has, your time will come soon enough. I'm not going to kill you prematurely yet, my buddy pal, pal friend. Right, so how big does a fire pit need to be? for chickens to not be able to jump out. I think two blocks should do it. So I'll dig down just one more, replace it with nether rack. And I've got to be careful that I'm not too close to wooden buildings so I don't set anything on fire. Nope, I'm not, so I shouldn't do. Great stuff. Just digging out the stone. Here we go. Right now, get out of here, you scumbag. Right, I'm going to end you. I'm going to end you, Mr. Chicken. And he's gone. Right, so I've got the nether rack in here. And I'll need, obviously, a way to light the netherrack without being too close to it, without setting myself ablaze. So I'm going to have to build some um, some kind of tunnel out of here. Oh, wait, I've run out of netherrack. Oh, no, what I'm going to need to do is... Let's get my pick out. I'm going to have to make this a 3x3 three three pit instead, I think. Or rather, just a 3x4. That works, too. Now, have I got some cobblestone with me? Yep, do. There we go. Just put down the cobs. Lovely stuff. And I use this to actually get out as well. Right, so the fire pit is almost complete. I'll just add a layer around the edge, just, just for safety's sake. Right, so a layer of cobs around the edge. Old cobstone. 
Out of my way! Out of my way, chicken! I, I mean it. This is serious business, right? Oh, thanks for the chicken. Now, will chickens kind of fall to their doom if I lead them by the nose using seeds? Let's take a look. Now, I'm just gonna walk over here and... No, they don't, you see. Oh, wow! Oh, this is really... Oh, look at all these chickens! Oh, look at them all gathering around. I feel like the Pied Piper right here. Now, I can't really pull them into the pit because they don't fall properly. But what I can do is build a bridge over the middle using uh, seeds. And then what I can do is just get... To... Hang... Hey, guys. Oh, right. They're not interested in me anymore. I'll go, go over here and then pull them back. All right, here's some new customers. Right, so what I'll do is I'll come over here and then I literally just bring them onto the bridge and then destroy the bridge. But this pit is going to need to be a lot bigger, I think. So I'm just going to get to work making this pit bigger. And to get around to the problem of not having enough netherrack, I think I could probably use lava instead. I've got so many, so much lava in my uh, in my biogas engines that I can just borrow some with a bucket, put down some lava, and ha, oh, pre hey presto, cooked chicken tonight. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking maybe I don't really need to kill these chickens yet. All I really need to do is get them out of my farm and just stop them from stinking up the landscape and getting in my way. If I can put them all in a pit, there's no need really for me to kill them just yet. It's kind of inhumane to kill a, to, to get a bunch of chickens into a pit and then just explode them or cook them. So maybe maybe there's another way I can do this. Maybe I can just... Oh, whoops, sorry, chicken. Maybe I can actually just save these guys, leave them in a pit, and just forget about them. Nah, to hell with that. I want to kill all these dudes. I'm just so mad at all the chaos and, and havoc they've caused on my farm. They put production back by like 20,000 million percent. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna get my revenge on these chickens for sure. All right, and there we are. I could probably actually light that netherrack, and it would still just spread to the chickens and kill them all. Right. So, oh, it's 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 getting to night time, and I don't want to get caught by any creepers and things attracting these chickens. So I'm gonna have a sleep, and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna get my seeds out, go around the farm collecting up all the chickens that I can, and dragging them back to the pit. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 yes. Oh, another, another fine morning back on the farm. Now I've got my seeds. It's time, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to gather up all the chickens. I'm like the Pied Piper for chickens. All I need is like a piccolo. Right, I'm just going to attract all these chickens with my pack of seeds and get them out of my farm. Oh, man, look at these dudes. Oh, yeah, they're wrecking, they're wrecking the crops, but luckily... Luckily, the farm's up and running, and it's correcting what the chickens, what the chickens do now. Why, why aren't these guys attracted by my seeds? Come on, dudes. This way. Oh, they're not leaving. Oh, but these guys are interested. Okay. Well, I just have to get as many chickens as I can, for the time being. Oh, come on, dudes. Fresh seeds. Fresh seeds. Get your fresh seeds, you scumbags. That's right. Oh, some over here. Come here, dudes. Got a surprise for you guys. Oh, yeah. Aren't these hungry mouths excited to get some seeds? Oh, you're going to get more than seeds in a second, my friends. Ha, ha, ha. Let me spin you a tale of trouble and woe. A man on a farm wanted chickens, you know. His aim was eggs and tender meat. A poultry task for a poultry treat. So set in motion a bold new plan. To gather up eggs, store them in a can, and throw them in a pen to create more chickens. But this is where the story goes all Charles Dickens. Happy with his work, the farmer did sleep, but in the night, the chickens did keep breeding and feeding and multiplying en masse. And when the farmer awoke, he did not yawn, but gasp. The chickens were millions and had broken free. A catastrophe not heard of in history. But now the time has come. You don't need to ask why. These chickens are a menace. And they must die. Ha ha ha. You're all for the chop now, chickens. I'm gonna blow you up and roast you and cook you and poison you. Oh, it's it's all it's all over for you guys. Ha ha ha. Ah uh, yes, now everything is in place. Look at all these chickens. Oh, they're all in this fire pit. Ah oh, now all we need to do is light light the fuse on these suckers and get them to ignition. Now, one of the problems is that if I set fire to those netherrack bricks, well, for one, I actually can't see them through all the chickens. I, I'd just be like hitting chickens with my flint and steel forever. So I don't think I, don't think I, can, I can even light 
the uh, the chickens yet, the, the, the netherrack. But what I can do, and and I think this will get me this will get me the actual XP and loot because if I if I burn chickens, even if I use lava, well I'm gonna lose all the XP and I'm gonna lose all of the all of the loot. But if I use some TNT. I can blow the chicken sky high, do serious damage, but I also think I preserve the experience because I've placed down the TNT. So I'll go and grab some blocks from the storehouse if I've got any left, and light the fuse on these suckers and send them sky high. Right, here we go. Four blocks of TNT, a redstone torch, and a stack of redstone. Now all I need to do is line up the TNT. Now TNT falls. Once it's activated, TNT actually drops like, a, like an object not held up in space. So what I can do is I can just put some TNT in the middle where the bridge was, light it, it'll all fall down to the middle and explode on the chickens and we should have ourselves a nice pot pie. Right, so let's put down some cobs. There are those chickens. Oh yeah, you pesky buggers. Right. Oh, now I'll put down some cobblestone blocks. Now this should... In theory, light up all of these TNTs at the same time, and our chickens will blow sky high. Now I'm a bit worried because if I d if this doesn't work, then all these chickens will be free again, and we'll have the same problem we had before when the chickens escaped the chicken coop. So fingers crossed. Here we are, guys. We're gonna light the fuse. Are you ready? Are you ready to rock? Right now, if I put the redstone torch here, oh, this is it. This is it. Intaro kaboom. Here we go. Oh no, only one block has fallen! Whoa! Oh, oh my... What? What? Where's all the XP? Oh no! Oh no, I didn't get any XP. But I'm level 36 and I didn't need any. Oh man, that, oh, that was a real shame. All I've, got, all I've got to show for all of that is two pieces of... Oh well, 25 pieces of raw chicken. Man, that sucks. Wow, I guess... Wow. Well... There we go, guys. I've taken out all the chickens. So what I'm going to have to do now is set up my melon and pumpkin patch. And actually, I think I'm going to cover this area up with some dirt to make it look all pretty again. Let's see. Just along here. Because this area was all nasty and stony anyway, so I could probably just do with get rid of, getting rid of all this stone and just covering this area with some, with some dirt that should hopefully turn into grass. I'm going to run out of dirt here, so I'm probably going to go over and just leave this for the moment. I can come back and do this off camera anyway. I can come, I can come over and do this anytime, really. So I'm going to go over to, ooh, I think the front of the farm and work out where I'm going to put my melon and my pumpkin patch. Now, let's see. I was thinking maybe I could put my melon and pumpkin patch here between the, the old barn, the old machine barn, the wheat field, and the storehouse, just on the corner here, because you don't need too much room to make pumpkins and melons, so maybe, maybe I could. What I'm going to go for is like a tiered approach with my melon and pumpkins and then have like, like different layers, like a kind of hanging garden. So I think what I'm probably going to do is set up a melon and pumpkin farm here and you guys can watch me do that right now. So, how are we going to build a pumpkin and a melon farm? Now, before I did anything, I marked out a rough square about the size of where I want our next multi-farm to be so that I could build around it and not block myself in the future. And that's what those four cobblestone blocks are there for. Now I wanted to use red brick to build the framework for this farm, but I also wanted to use some of the new balsa wood we farmed. So I prepared some balsa wood fences to border our farm and the cool gray on red was a really nice look. Pumpkins and melons grow a lot differently to normal crops like wheat. They need two blocks to spread since the root itself is grown on a ploughed dirt block and the actual fruit appears next to the plant. Now that soil will also need to be near water so that it's well irrigated. At the back I used red brick stairs to create fountains for the water to flow out of and then because of the tiered approach we took that water could flow down to the lower levels of the farm. One thing to consider, of course, was access to the pumpkins and the melons, because if I'm growing these crops, I'm going to need to be able to get near them to hit them and farm them and get the seeds back and get the fruit itself. So building a pathway at the front was something I had to do at some point. 
once the farm had been completed, it was time to hoe the ground and get it actually ready for the pumpkins and melons. But the actual planting is something you'll have to wait until next episode for. But for now, it's time to take a step back and enjoy what we've created. Now, I'm really, really happy with this build. It may be a simple one, but I really like how it looks. And I think this pumpkin and melon patch fits in perfectly at our farm. Right, well this has been back at Feed the World. It's been good to get back to the farm after this long break away, but I feel refreshed now and I feel like really excited to get my farm up and running and ah, oh, we still got a few chickens kicking around. I didn't manage to round up them all, but I got as many as I could and, uh, and I think I did a good job of exploding those suckers. I haven't got enough now for them to be a real menace. They're just a bit of a pest and I've still got my shotgun so I can deal with them at some point, I suppose. So next episode, what we'll probably do is go to the tree breeding area, see if we can find some more saplings of the cool new trees that we haven't got yet. We'll also get our seeds out, our pumpkin and our melon seeds, and actually plant those suckers down so you can see how it's going to work, and how the farm is going to hold the pumpkins and the melons. We've also got a to-do list that we have to kind of work our way down, and I have to replace my sign out front. Oh yeah, I forgot that this episode. So I've been Stjin, and this has been Feed the World. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. We fixed our chicken problem pretty much once and for all, and I can't wait for next episode. So I'll see you guys. Hit like and favorite and subscribe. And take care.